Hello, my name is Sam Feltham and welcome to Expert Interviews here on Smash the Fat. With me today is mentor for chimp management on behalf of Professor Steve Peters, Robbie Anderson. How you doing, Robbie? Hi there, Sam. Hi there. Thanks for having me. No problem, no problem. It's a real pleasure to have you on um, because uh, we're going to be chatting about the chimp paradox which might sound quite strange to some people, uh, but I came across this book in a conversation um, with a uh, GB Paralympian, David Andrew Smith, who won the, uh, the rowing gold at the Paralympics at London 2012. Um, and he said, uh, you really, really need to check out the chimp paradox. And I was kind of like, that kind of sounds a little bit weird, but um, because I'm kind of more of a listener rather than a reader, I picked up the audio book um, via Audible, and folks can grab The Chimp Paradox if you haven't already got a free audio book from Audible via smashthefat.com forward slash Audible. Highly recommend this because it's read by Professor Steve Peters himself, um, and listened to it, thought it was absolutely amazing, talked about it to my girlfriend, girlfriend bought bought the book and now we kind of always talk about our inner chimps <laughs> which is quite a funny thing to talk about we'll get into that in just a little bit and before we do that what I want to find out is kind of your background and how you kind of got involved with this whole chimp paradox okay great um, yeah well I mean if we go back in time a little bit to when I first met Steve it was just after the Olympic Games in Beijing and uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Steve, and he drew on a napkin, actually, this model for understanding this really um, magnificent human brain of ours, and he simplified it down onto a napkin, <laughs> and if I'm honest, just kind of seeing it there and then in that simplistic form, but getting so much understanding, I thought, wow, this is, this is really powerful. And uh, since then, I've worked with chip management um, since its formation as a company, but obviously in its earlier years, it's just a team of of mentors, and uh, I now find myself working with a whole host of, of different people, uh, and it's 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 been a really fun journey so far. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating because you guys work with a with kind of a broad range of people, kind of from the corporate side of things to sports teams as well. And you specifically at the moment work closely with uh, GB Taekwondo, don't you? Yeah, that's right, Sam. Yeah, I think like you said there, there's there's many many different people who can find benefit from understanding a little bit about themselves and others. So that's one quite important thing actually. The book wasn't necessarily written just for a sports market, um, and actually we found that people are coming forward from many domains, whether it's corporate or self development or sport and even education, and saying um, there's real value from understanding themselves and others uh, that bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which is which is terribly important, especially kind of when it comes to health and fitness um, in kind of a a world that's very very quick, and you have to make decisions kind of very very quick. Um, now uh, let's get into what exactly this chimp paradox exactly is. Okay, great. Um, well, if we look at the background of Steve, so Steve uh, Peters, obviously the author of the book. Steve comes as a consultant psychiatrist um, and what he's done there is looking at the brain as a machine and what we understand is that it's very very complex um, so what Steve was able to do was just look at the brain and say well actually we can recognize that different structures in the brain have different purposes so if we start by saying let's take this complicated machine and work with something more simple and that's the chimp model then what we can actually say is we can take parts of the brain put them into teams, and there's three main teams in the chimp model, uh, and therefore we can say, okay, what are these different players doing at different times? And in our model, that's the human, the chimp, and the computer. So suddenly we realize that this chimp actually is an emotional machine in our brain, and we can work with it to try and get to, our, to the ends that we're after. Absolutely. I mean, you kind of mentioned the three main things that come across in the book there, that we have these three brains, the human, the computer, and the chimp. So let's kind of go through those three kind of individually, what they are, what they deal with, and kind of, you know, how we can manage them better, maybe. Okay, great. So if we were to start by looking at brain imaging and actually what's happening in the brain, we see that the frontal lobe, which is towards the front of the head here, it's 
got main functions relating to logical thinking. So if I was to ask you to think um, maybe it's about an ambition you've got moving into the future or some planning, mm -hmm. uh, and we were to look for facts and truth, then we'd see this frontal lobe, and that's the human lighting up. Uh, conversely, if we were to go to a bit more emotional prompted thinking, so now we're looking at things like our, fa our feelings, uh, the impressions that we have, maybe it's the impulsive drives that we experience, then we're suddenly now starting to look towards the chimp. And again, it's not too hard to realize now that actually uh, we have two independent thinking brains. Now that's quite a big idea to think about because obviously it's easy to say we've got a left and a right hand and it's yeah. easy to say, you know, I might be right-handed because we've learned that. But actually we're just starting to realize now that there's actually two independent thinking brains and actually the chimp is far more powerful. So uh, that's one of the, that's the two players we're looking at there, a logical um, rational human and an emotional chimp. But I'd like to stress yeah. that I'm not saying that the chimp is bad. Actually, we know full well that the chimp can be really good for us, and it's down to us to work with it and nurture it so that it doesn't bite us and others all that often. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, really important. Um, so let's kind of go through an example of where somebody's chimp might get a little bit out of control and how you can better manage that chimp. Or would you like to give me an example of maybe it's when your chimp's been out, Sam? Yeah, so we were talking about this before we before we started the broadcast. And um, me and my girlfriend are very, very much into the chimp paradox and kind of using it on in daily life. And we, we've had a few arguments, you know, like every couple does, whether it be about kind of, you know, the laundry or cleaning or whatever, you know. Um, and, um, yeah, then the kind of the chimp comes out. So I'll say something flippant that I, I didn't mean at all um, and then, you know, completely regret afterwards. So let's let's take the example of, of me and my girlfriend arguing about the laundry, for instance, and, and I say, you know, well, you know, you should be doing it or something like that. <laughs> okay. It's a good example, isn't it, whereby if we were to look and say, how do I want to be in that situation? That's what we're ultimately saying here, uh, because what people are commonly coming forward and saying is that I'm acting or thinking in a way that I actually don't really want to. You know, maybe as I am uh, worrying about what other people think, or I'm overeating and I can't manage it, or I just want to be happier. And actually what you're saying there is that we can see that if we could take back a little bit of that control, then we'd probably be a bit of a happier person. So again, in your practical example, we can see that the, the chimp wakes up, and pretty soon I'm sure that your partner's chimp wakes up, and there can be a full ball battle going over something which actually is pretty insignificant. And uh, that's part of the skill that we work with people, is helping to recognize when the chimp's out, and then getting the skills to be able to manage it. Um, because, again, if we understand a little bit of the science, it's, it's actually, we can't control the chimp. And again, if we look at the rules of the brain, the message goes to the chimp first. Mm -hmm. So what that means is it's going to have its say first, uh, which is why often if we look at diets, it's really quite hard to say something like, I'm just not going to eat anymore. You know, I'm going <laughs> to, New Year's resolution, I'm going to go to the gym for a month, okay? Uh, and what we actually find is that four or five days later, it's out the window. So we've got to recognize that some tools of working with the chimp aren't going to be all that effective. So recognizing what is and practicing them is, is what we do at chimp management. Absolutely. And kind of being self-aware is a big important part of this. And it's not just that you can have an argument, say something really emotionally hurtful, and then just blame it on your chimp. You're kind of, uh, earlier you were talking about, you know, um, manage it. It's like having a pet for instance. Mm. Now, that's a good point. And actually, uh, one thing about the chip model, it, it's practical and fun. It gives you some tools to get a bit of understanding, but it's got a serious side to it as well. Because as you outlined there, if we're commonly finding destructive beliefs or destructive behaviors, and I find many people who are suffering you know, uh, quite miserably, then it's really important that we can try and recognize why. And the important thing I'd like to stress is that this is a very healthy brain. If you've got a little chimp which is saying, you know, I want to eat, 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 that's a very healthy food drive. But what we soon recognize is it might not be helpful 
in the everyday life that we're living in. And often people say, I don't know why I, I bought that packet of biscuits and uh, mm. had one, but then I had the whole packet. But of course, the chimp doesn't see it that way. So you're right about recognizing it and getting the skills is a really important point. And you can't just blame the chimp. It's part of your brain. It's an, it's an independent machine. So we've got to work with it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, kind of going, yeah, working with it is, is exactly what we need to do. Um, and in the, in the book, it says that the chimp is like five times stronger, is it, than, than the human? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So again, if we were to imagine the chimpanzee in the wild, a real chimpanzee, it's about five times stronger than a human being. So there's no point in me trying to arm wrestle it if it gets out. And likewise, I'm sure we've all been at the other end of somebody else's chimp, and it's, it's, you know, it's hard work to try and manage it. Um, but again, that's underpinned by neuroscience. So what we're effectively saying is, because the message goes to the chimp first, it gets to act, and actually we don't which is why we often act, and then sometime later, when the blood moves to the human, we're left to feel guilty. And again, I might draw on the argument or the eating too many biscuits example, where again, the emotional brain, the chimp, has acted, and sometimes later, the logical brain, the human, has said, I don't want to be this way. So we've got to learn to work with it. Yeah, absolutely. And how do we exactly kind of... Because we, we were saying kind of before, again, the broadcast, we, we were getting into quite a discussion there, um, that the management side of this comes from reflection. It doesn't kind of come from the moment itself. It actually comes from the reflection and then kind of, you know, waiting for the situation to rise again, and then you kind of you perform better um, that time. Um, so how do we uh, reflect upon kind of, you know, let's take the, the eating too many biscuits, for instance, um, yeah. example. How do we reflect on that and then manage our chimp um, and so our behavior is better? It's a very, very good question. And actually, if you remember earlier, we said that there's three brains um, when we look at the chimp model. Now, we've covered the human. Uh, we've covered the chimp. There's actually a third one, which uh, in our model, we've called it the computer. Now, again, we cheated a little bit to simplify the brain. But what we're saying is that the computer stores our learnt beliefs and our learnt behaviors. So actually, you're correct. If we sit down, and often if we're going to sit down and reflect, we'll be reflecting in the human. So we sit down and we're able to review how we're behaving and if we'd like to respond differently. So actually what we're doing is we're reviewing what's in the computer and we're editing it. So with your uh, biscuits example, if I haven't committed to losing weight or haven't committed to um, you know, a quite stringent rule, let's say I'm not going to eat any biscuits until the end of the month, then what happens is in the split moment when I'm presented with a, a lovely selection of chocolate biscuits, my chimp's going to look at that tray. It's going to see if there's anything it needs to know from the computer. There's nothing there to say don't eat it, and it fills its face. Now, if I then reflect on that and think this isn't helpful and it's not the way I want to be, and I make a rule which is come the end of the month, uh, we'd have lost this weight, would look great. The chimp sounds like it's all on board for that. The probability is next time I go to the biscuit tray, I've got something in the computer that just stops the chimp in its track. And we can apply that to many, many things. You know, many of the times that we get hijacked by the emotional chimp, it's because we haven't got necessary backup in the computer to say, well, hold on, there's a different way. Yeah, because the, the, the computer processes things even faster than the chimp, doesn't it? That's great, absolutely. So what we're looking at is a powerful chimp, because it gets the blood first in terms of the brain, it gets the message first. But then we're looking at a very fast computer if it's programmed. So if I give you a really basic example, when we're learning to drive. So we've got this brain, and it's set up with these three machines, a human, a chimp, and a computer. And it's driving along, and we see this red light. Now, because we're new to driving, we're not really sure yet the automatic response. So what actually happens is the chimp can panic. And we can see that actually, when we first started driving, it's not dissimilar to probably a chimp driving along. We can <laughs> slam the brake or put the accelerator down or you know, go into freeze or flight mode. However, over time, we practice a much more automatic response. And actually, what you'll find is most people are driving in the computer, which is why we get to work and we say, I didn't even notice. You know, we're actually capable of doing other things. So the computer is very, very fast if well programmed. Yeah, so it's all about being a good programmer, 
kind of when it comes to that. <laughs> and, and, and how do we exactly code, code these programs? It's a really good question, and I think that's what we've done with the book. So what we've done with the Chimp Paradox is we've broken it down into seven areas that you can work on. Uh, so there's understanding yourself, understanding others, being able to communicate well, living in your world, um, health, taking health of yourself, and then success and happiness. And what we're saying is you can go into each one of those areas and work on the skills which the book will take you through. And there's exercises in there which are designed to you know, help us to reflect a little bit, but also to build a bit of understanding. So that's what we've done with the book. And likewise, you know, if people are struggling and saying, well, I really enjoy the book, but I can't quite get to this, then there's, you know, we have mentors at Chip Management now who are also working with people. So that, that's what we're looking at in terms of understanding the brain and working with it. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's so important to kind of understand yourself, which kind of seems like an oxymoron, but it's it's vital to know that you don't fully know yourself, I suppose, and it is about trying to uh, reflect on your reactions, behaviours and things like that, so that then you can better manage life the yeah. next time, isn't it? Um, so let's kind of get into into examples that, that you've worked with um, in, in the field, because you're, you're out and about throughout the whole UK um, doing this, you know, off to Leeds, London, Manchester and things like that. So is there any kind of specific example where um, you've kind of applied this to, to somewhere in particular and you've seen just a, a massive, um, massive response and result from that? I think if we look at a very common request that might come into us, um, where people are saying, for example, I want to change a behavior like um, road rage, okay? And again, I'm going to use a specific example like that, but you can put in pretty much any issue and go back to the brain we're working with. So somebody comes in and they say, I've got road rage. And the first point to recognize is, do you want to be this way? You know, do you want to be responding, gesticulating, maybe risking you know, your own safety? And people often say, no, actually, it's not the way I want to be. So that's the first sign that the chimp is at work. You know, if people are saying this isn't how I want to be, then we know that the chimp has got an agenda. Okay? So now what we might do with that is to say, okay, let's try and let's try and identify how you'd rather be in that situation. So again, it might be something practical, like saying, right, I'm gonna get an offer from the chimp to go crazy and gesticulate at this person in front of me. However, I'm gonna try and count to ten seconds. Now, interestingly, as far as the brain works, it sounds like a simple strategy. But well, that 10 seconds could be just the amount of time for the blood to move to the human, and suddenly we realize, I can't change everything, and actually I don't own the roads, and whilst it's a shame the guy's driving like that, I'm not going to react to it. So what I commonly find is that many, many things come in. If we go to an, another example, perhaps uh, elite sport. Now, obviously, these are really, really dedicated, really, really committed athletes, and they're spending so much time uh, on the on the training mat or on the bike or on the football pitch that of course when it comes to competition people say well you know how are they not able to do perhaps what they're training mm. and again what we've got to recognize is that there's a machine with set rules and if we don't work with it it can hijack us and that's the same for any of us so again even if we're looking at an elite level athlete we're saying okay let's understand what could unstabilize us what could wake the chimp up Let's be ready for it, and let's put some helpful uh, computer programs or autopilots, as it would be in the book, in place. Absolutely, and it's it's very very individual for everyone because we all kind of react differently, behave differently, and I suppose it's it's important to recognise that we all need to go on on our own path. I suppose, and, and the chimp paradox does kind of give us that framework in which to work around and, and being able to work with a chimp management mentor is kind of a useful thing because they can help kind of guide you like a like a Sherpa, you know, going up to Mount Everest, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, how, how, how does that work in terms of um, chimp management mentors and, and things like yeah. that? Yeah, um, I, I think you've made a good point there in that anyone can pick up the book, so you don't have to just work with a, with a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly, for example, there's an audio book as well where people like to listen to it um, and they find it's practical to fit in. So the first thing would be just to have a little bit of a read through and, and, and what we often find is that the brain's really good at picking up facts. So we can read something and we can get the facts pretty quick, but the concept, so 
So that might be that light bulb moment where we go, oh, wow. Uh, that can take a little bit more time. So, for example, the first step might be to read it, and then we might go away and do the exercises and find some value. But what we can often find as well is it's fair to say that it's a skill to be able to recognize, understand, and manage your mind. And sometimes people are saying, I'm sticking. I'm at a sticking point. And that's where they might get in contact with a mentor. Um, and as a company, we've, we've tried to do more workshop opportunities, which enables more people to come in, because clearly one-to-ones can be quite um, time-consuming. Um, but that's one way of doing it, is coming in and saying, right, I've read the book, I've got a load of questions. You know, that's a great way to work. If somebody comes in and says, right, what's happening here? What's happening here? I've tried this, I've tried that. Then it's often much easier for us as mentors to work with them as well. So it's a bit of a collaboration, really. They bring the questions. And we try and help with some expertise. And that always seems to be be the case that um, as, a, as a coach or a mentor, um, you, you're working with the person to kind of discover together almost about kind of solutions to their problems a little bit as well. And, and just being able to understand why you maybe behave in a particular way so you can reprogram it in, in the computer. Uh, would you say that's fair? Yeah, I think it's a really good point. And, and of course, um, it's, it's what we know again from research of many domains, whether it's school or business or sport, is that people who take ownership um, over their own development often go the furthest. Um, so of course it's not really down to myself or the mentors to go in and, and try and change things. However, flip that round and recognize that some people might be saying, I need help, I'm really struggling, then of course that's when we meet up and, and make that connection. Um, I mean in terms of working with very many different individuals of very many different backgrounds. The other reality is that it is about the individual. And whilst we were able to write a book to get out some ideas, of course, people are going to come in with different histories, different backgrounds, um, which, which makes it all that bit more subtle. Definitely, definitely. Trying to work with someone um, to, to find out their individual solution is, is so, so important, especially in health and and fitness because we're all different and all very very unique um, so yeah I just want to say that's fantastic Robbie it's been great having you on the show chatting about this um, and if people do have any questions at all about it um, they can go to the website chimpmanagement.com uh, where you can get in contact uh, with Robbie himself or any other mentors out there um, and you can also follow them on Twitter and I'm sure they're just as helpful on Twitter as well, Robbie, uh, at Chimp Management and on Facebook, obviously, under Chimp Management as well. And if you want to do, if you do want to grab a copy of the book, um, if you're in the US, um, you can grab it from Amazon at smashthefat.com forward slash Chimp US. And then if you're in the UK, smashthefat.com forward slash Chimp UK. And again, uh, if you do want to grab the audio book with Professor Steve Peters reading it himself, um, you can grab a copy of that for free if it's your first time signing up to Audible at smashthefat.com forward slash Audible. Um, and uh, finally, Robbie, were there any wise words that you wanted to leave with our, with our viewers? I think the thing I'd close with is to be quite honest and say that the chimp model might not actually be the model for everybody. Um, and that's true. It won't ring true for some people. But what I would say is, you know, we all like to try and take care of our physical health. And to me, psychological fitness is no different. So hopefully this is one model that could help you. But if it isn't, just find something else that's out there. There's plenty of good models and plenty of good people. But just put some time to yourself and hopefully you can find the self-fulfillment you're after. So that would be it from me to yourself. Absolutely, Robbie, absolutely. Um, and kind of just to add on to that is that um, one thing that I've, I've been doing kind of over the past five years since I've been in the health and fitness industry uh, mostly is kind of ancient philosophy. And, and this kind of... Um, this kind of approach, the chimp paradox, almost kind of reminds me of stoicism in its in its purest sense um, a little bit. Sort of, you know, going with the flow but managing it at the same time, um, which is quite interesting because these kind of ideas kind of repeat themselves and we, we remodel it to be a bit more current and a bit more kind of, um, I suppose, in tune with how we are these days. 
I think if you look back in history, there's been very many great pioneers who have tried to understand humans. And we're not saying that we've suddenly changed the world here, but what we are saying is with advances in brain technology, we now know that there's an independent emotional brain, and if we work with it, then we can shoot forward. If we work against it, it can hijack us in every day. So you're right, it builds on foundations, but there are nuances uh, yeah. and exciting kind of advances all the time. Very cool, Robbie, very cool. And there's only one more thing to do, and that's to hear us smash it out from Robbie Anderson. So on three, I want you to shout smash it out to the camera. So one, two, three. Smash it out. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I let my chimp take care of that one for me. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Fantastic. Well, again, check out chimp, uh, the chimp paradox on Amazon at smashthefat.com forward slash chimp. US or Chimp UK and definitely check out the website chimpmanagement.com. Again, thank you, Robbie, for your time today. And uh, yeah, hope to hope to see you soon. Thanks, Sam. Take care. Take care, bud.